fear you hear in that man voice, bro. That was something that he he feared. And to fear something so much to where you know the outcome of you pulling this trigger was to live or die. Live or die. That was it. Either I'm going to go to jail or I'm going to die right here. And he chose that because a lot of people I've never been. I've never been locked up and never in no shit like that. Mm -hmm. But I always heard just the thought of you living, but you're not running your own life. Mm -hmm. You locked down and shit. Somebody telling you what to eat, what you can wear. And you around other people that's like-minded. And I know there's great people in jail and things like that. But I'm saying just the environment of being put in that kind of situation a nigga probably would rather go. Yeah. It's it's a it's tough as fuck. Say it. It's tough as fuck. It's bro. gotta be. I can't, yeah. I can't say whether anybody was right or wrong because even looking at a police officer situation at the end of the day, this man shot a gun at me and it went toward my face and I almost shot my partners and things. You feel what I'm saying? Right, so right, right. my life is in danger too. I couldn't say if I was a police officer, I wouldn't make this same decision. And I can't say I can't say if I was a young man, I wouldn't have done the same thing. It's, like I said, it's a situation with nobody. It ain't no right outcome, man. Yeah, Unless man. everybody went home happy that night. It wasn't no right outcome. And I just hate it for everybody on either side to have to encounter that. For his homeboys to have to see that shit go down. For, you know what I'm saying, his moms and shit, bro. The ops, like, just... It's a tough situation, man. I just, I hate it for everybody. That's really all I can say. I know I'm repeating myself, but it's, I'm repeating myself because my emotions have been so mixed up over this shit. I don't know how to feel. I don't know how to fucking feel. And that's what's real to me, bro. That is so deep. I feel for that young man. At the same time, I feel for the police officer light that was in, that was, you know what I'm saying, obviously in danger. Mm -hmm. I feel for everybody who was there that night, the young men, the seeing their homeboy get man. Just nobody' life is gonna be the same after that night, man. That's gonna be something that's gonna be forever etched in your memory. No matter how old you get, you are gonna remember that fucking night. It's it's hard to speak on, man. I'm gonna let it go after that, but the shit just I don't know, man. Sue, what you got, brother? Um, man, it's. It's a tough situation, man, because, I mean, I agree, you know, it's, it's wild to think that people are talking about a 17-year-old as in, like, they can't understand why he would do something like that, you know, and first of all, yes, it's, it's a bad idea to just pull the gun on the police like that. But it's like many layers to that statement because it's not a bad idea to pull your gun on the police. Because, I mean, well, I'll get into that a little bit later. But I'm, what I'm saying is, like, you have a 17-year-old boy who doesn't think past, like, two days from now. Mm -hmm. And the reason I say that is because I didn't think two days from now when I was 17. So I understand, you know what I'm saying, some of the decisions that was being made on that level. Uh, and I understand how today I wouldn't make those same decisions, but I can't expect the 17-year-old boy to make the decision with all the information that I have now if I'm not taking the time to give him that information. You know what I'm saying? And so it's like, okay, what are we doing out here? Uh, but then also, like, looking at it from the other end, I'm like, well, why was this cop so persistent on trying to find something? You know what I'm saying? And why was he... Uh, approaching the situation like that most people are like oh yeah he was like being cool or whatever but there was a real like condescending like undertone in some of the things he was saying to like every boy that got out of that car it seemed like he was like almost uh insinuating everybody was a criminal as they got out the car he was like oh those some nice shoes you know what i'm saying blah, blah, blah. uh what was you doing at the party though like was y'all drinking you know it's like it was a really weird situation all the way around, but my thing is, uh, if you're going to pull a gun on the police, don't do it without no purpose, right? I, I believe the great philosopher uh, Andre 3000 said, uh, don't pull the thing out unless you plan to bang. Don't even bang unless you plan to hit something. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, there's 
I mean, yeah, it sounds cool on the track, but there's like some really key points in there. So, I mean, you got to be a lot more strategic like that. If you're going to make a decision like that, you're going to have to be a lot more strategic than that. You know what I'm saying? Like, don't just, I mean, because yes, you're going to die if you don't know what you're doing when you pull your gun on the police. Now, I mean, there's a select few people out there who will agree with me here because most everybody that's listening to me right now is like, why is this nigga talking about pulling the gun on the police? Well, I see things from a different lens because there's a literal, like, attack going on in the community to where CJ was even in a situation like that to begin with. You know what I'm saying? Because he was looked at as some 16-year-old black boy in the car with other black boys past a certain time they gotta be up to something so let me go stop them at, right and find something to put in the books or whatever uh, but ultimately the discussion is not really needing to be about what um, what CJ might have done or didn't do um, what are we doing now to to make sure we have conversations with the youth so that when they get into those situations they can make a, a a better decision. Now, most people, now, I don't know, they'll say things like, well, it starts in the home, you know. His mother should have been teaching him better or whatever the case may be, but it's like we'll say that and then in the same breath say it takes a village. So we have to hold ourselves accountable to say yeah, yes. uh, what time are we devoting to make sure we're having this conversation with a young brother or with a young sister to let them know that, yes, you have to maneuver a little bit better, but, yes, it's people out here who maneuver the best and still get killed. So, I mean, you know, like, it's it's not black and white, but still, do what you got to do. You know what I mean? And, I mean, I think it just boils down to what are we going to do from here going forward. Not, like, what he did or didn't do that day, but what are we going to do to help the next, yeah. To move to China. Right. All right, let me go. Let me get to everybody that's tuned in right now. We got Mr. Leland Smith tuned in. We got, I don't know if that's this. This is all my disrespect, but Dominique is tuned in right mm. now. Um, Tosha's tuned in right now. Uh, Rasul is tuned in right now. We appreciate everybody that's tuned in right now, man. Thank you. We appreciate it. Make sure you hit that like button. It's 28 of y'all. I expect 28 likes. Right. On this subject, hey, listen, Hit it's a hard light. subject to talk about right now. What we are discussing is the, sh- the shooting that happened this week. Um, we know everybody has ran through it and ran over it a uh, hundred times by now. Um, so, what I want to make sure I get across is that what we are not going to do is disrespect the family. No. Um, they've been through enough. The thing that pissed me off the most this week, I would say, is how fast I seen people switch up when this video came out. Mm -hmm. And for me, my perspective didn't change. My perspective from the beginning was I seen people on Facebook, uh, family members, friends, just begging, crying for information and not really having the answers that they needed Mm -hmm. and Mm -hmm. begging the public to share and like, you know, help. And me as a black man, of course, as a black father, of course, it's going to touch home. Of course, it's going to hit home. Of course, I'm going to ride for whatever situation that happens when it's a black teen, black man, black kid, black woman. Mm -hmm. I don't care. Right. For me... I saw a lot of switching up when this video came out. I didn't like it. And then the switching up came with the bashing. Yeah. yeah. Of this 17-year-old boy at the end of the day, regardless what everybody thinks about him, regardless what everybody, his criminal past, his background, that is somebody's child. That is somebody's brother. That is somebody's everything. Mm -hmm. Father. Uncle. Father. Uncle, all of this, mm-hmm. and the life, the life is gone. It's not gonna be the same. Mm-hmm. He's 
he's not coming back. The light that's been painted behind everything that's happened is to make this kid look like he's just this bad person when he's actually dealing with the light. And I can relate to it because I'm black and I've been there. It's First of real. all, my story ain't uh, Craig Stewart sitting right in front of you uh, bringing you this orderly conduct sitting right here. No. I've had some transgressions in my past. I've been arrested. I've gone to jail. I've fucked up and done some stupid shit. But that shouldn't be, you shouldn't be blamed for making one damn mistake. He's already paid the ultimate price for that. Yeah. For everybody else to run him over and step on him. I don't, I expect the average white person to run him over. That mm. doesn't upset me. We, you know that what you, everybody in this room know what I'm saying. That doesn't upset me. We expect that. Mm-hmm. But when it comes from us, and now everybody wants to coddle. Oh, he was a good cop. He talked to him. Yeah, he was cool. They had great conversation. He wasn't trying to hurt him. That's protocol. That's not, he's his friend. Yeah. And then people want to forget, like, we just had Philando, Terrence, Eric. Mm-hmm. I, we, can look at, we can name everybody that's died from police brutality. I don't know. Was this situation justified? Book by law? Yes. But could the situation have been handled differently with a 17-year-old kid? Kids. Kids. Regardless whether they were out past curfew, regardless whether he had a gun, regardless whether he had weed on him, it was still somebody's kid. And I, I just don't appreciate the fact that everybody wants to hold the kid to this higher standard. The kid got to do all of this. He has to be, he got to do everything by the book. But the cop, don't have to. he get the pass. Yeah. Fuck that. Right here, right now, I'm holding everybody accountable. I'm holding the cops accountable. Mm-hmm. I don't care. Because I have a license. I'm a truck driver. For everybody that don't know, I have a truck driver. I am a truck driver. Um, If I go out here and I kill one of y'all in my semi it's over for me being a truck driver. You shouldn't be able to be a cop after you kill some damn body. I don't care what the situation is. There is no training. There is no uh, uh, psychotherapist uh, training that you can go through after you do or experience something like that. I don't care whether you're right or wrong, justifiable or not. Mm. There is no amount of training that's going to take you back to the person that you were before you pulled that trigger. And he's going to look at black men. He's going to look at black women. He's going to look at everybody differently. And I'm not afraid to say that. Mm -hmm. I said this week, man, I was going to stand on what I say. I'm going to say it and I'm going to sit there and I'm going to stand on it. Anybody can call me out. Y'all can look at me and say whatever. But what you ain't going to say is I'm being fake. The cops should be held to a higher standard than the key. Whether the shooting was justifiable or not, we all seen where shit could have been done differently by grown-ass men who are supposed to be trained to handle certain situations, regardless whether or not they've been in a situation or not. That's what the training is for. Am I wrong? Right. Y'all go ahead, because I'm going up right now. <laughs> I don't want to take over. I feel... No, we got comments and stuff. Yeah, I see you that. You want to even get to the comments uh, before you get started? Or you want to go? It's okay. Jeez, um, let's do some comment. Let, let's do some comment action. We got everybody tuned in right now. Like I said, this is a tough conversation to have. Uh, first of all, we didn't even say... I want to make sure we say rest in peace, CJ. Uh... Condolences to his family, his mom, Miss Crystal, um, Miss Laquanda, his cousin, um, anybody that's family members, friends, they know this guy that that, that was a son, a father, an uncle, a husband. I, I, uh, it's frustrating because I got a son and 
I know how quick and easy it is for my son to be in that exact same situation because it doesn't matter whether he had parents. It doesn't matter whether he was raised right. Y'all know like I know, when we stayed at our parents' damn house, we acted one way at home. And then when we went to school, we was a totally different goddamn person. So, don't come at me with that. <laughs> I just... Mm-hmm. Like we said, let me get to some of these comments. <laughs> Leela says, you make good points, but men mentioned you need to play their part before it even comes to this. I agree. I'm not disagreeing with that. I'm not disagreeing with that at all, Lynn. Not one bit. Uh, Miss Denise, this is just a double come on. Let me make sure I get the full comment. <laughs> Mr. Sheldon says, keep on pushing, bro. Hold on, let me make sure I get Miss Denise full. I think she typed in. Make sure I get all the comments. Let me go back. Let me just go just go all the way down. Make this right. Uh, Dominic says, the only reason your emotion is mixed up is because you wanted and expected the cops to be wrong. I think she's talking to you, brother. Huh? Yeah, not at all. I, honestly, if you want to be real, I waited for all the facts came out to even speak on the story because the initial report said that he fired a gun. Look, like you said, it's, that's protocol. If you pull a gun, you will get fired upon. They teach you that in hunting. Anything that had to do with firearms, bro. I just wanted to know what the circumstance was. I didn't expect nobody to be wrong. That wasn't my decision to make. I just wanted to know the scope of the situation. I, anybody could have been wrong, technically, but I wasn't looking at, oh, nigga, please did it this time. I'm not that kind of person. I'll wait to, to say, you know, figure out what the fuck going on before I say some shit. Right. I can't preemptively judge shit because I wasn't there for the situation. It's always... It's always going to be three sides to whatever going on. It's who it happened to, the person who did it, and God. I wasn't there. I was just waiting for a news report to come out. That's what people should do. I don't make initial reports, nigga. I wait for everything to come together and then go from there. Anybody could have been wrong. Dominic says, don't play the race car, bro. Laugh out loud. They were stopped because curfew was passed and they looked suspicious by driving slow like they were in love. First of all, it don't matter if you could be doing the goddamn me speed limit, driving correct, and if you're black, you're going to get pulled over. It don't matter what you're doing. I want to just, I'm going to say that off top. Can we, I don't, can we not be lost? Can we not? Can we not? <laughs> Obviously, no. We can't, we can't be lost. <laughs> can't be lost. <laughs> Please have you, We got to know where we're going. Uh, Being lost is a big one. Sharonda says, D. We appreciate those comments, Mr. Hit those, that like button. Hit the share button. The heart button. The angry button. The sad button. I don't care. Well, damn. <laughs> Make sure you tuned in because we get into these comments. Uh, damn, you kid me. I don't know what Larry is talking about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, people were saying the cops killed him for no reason. He had a gun, blah, blah, blah. Then look, okay, Mr. Dummy. We see where you at, sir. Uh, let's get to this other one. He did it to himself. He used to rob him. He was up to no good. He had more. He's and that here guy. Here they go. Dumb him, is man. that here guy. You okay, go. we figured here you out. Go. He came out the closet. You sound like a coon. Yeah. First of all, you can dismiss yourself. Definitely. This isn't the page or the 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 broadcast. Definitely you sound like a coon. Um, if that's how you feel, sir. With you your can coon ass. exit the stage left because we will not tolerate any disrespect of this young man. He has coon. already paid the ultimate price for his actions. So, anything else you have to say, brother, is null and void. Coming into so, fame and what's wrong with you? you right. Everything that you have to say. I don't Every care if you follow my page or not. That's just how I feel. Man. We're going to keep on moving. Uh, Leland said, and all those people. Must take the same concern <laughs> while he's still alive. That was a good young man. Yes. You can tell he did not want to be there by him saying, I cannot go to jail. He was complying before that point. I do not blame him. I blame us. I blame us men who failed him. Let's yeah, say I, that. I feel that like a motherfucker. Everybody. Not everybody. We failed him. Yeah. We failed him. Like yeah. What are we doing to present to prevent this from happening? What brothers can we do to prevent something else? We need to be having this conversation. Like this from happening. We have this very same conversation 
What can we tell with the young CJ? You got the older brothers that got and said their opinion. I, I haven't heard anybody from us that I well, don't have the platform, I should say, to mm-hmm. do it, but to speak on it. What can they do to? The fact of the matter is, right. it ain't shit. It. It, it ain't. It ain't nothing it you can nothing do. The fact do. of the matter is, we it's nothing. Seen. You can't do nothing. We have seen where we be complying. Yeah. Where we are right. It's <laughs> we not everything right. It's not we black and white. Still end up shot. Yeah, it's not we black and white. Still end up killed. It's all depending on whatever they want to you know decide to do with it. All I can say. Instead of everybody preaching, you need to pull your pants up when you with the cops. You need to say, yes, sir, yes, ma'am. No. You need to do all this and that. Fuck that. That ain't stopping you from dying. Respectability politics Once is some bullshit. Once you get out that goddamn car, your life is on the line. Once you make that decision to exit that vehicle, I will say this. Know your rights. Teach your kids to know their rights. Whether or not the cops comply with what you do. With your rights, you still need to know those rights. It's up to us to teach our kids the rights about when it comes to dealing with the cops instead of telling them, hands on the steering wheel, do this and that. That's cool. I get it. Yes. That's not going to stop shit. (laughs) That's not. Don't let me take over, bro. Y'all go ahead. No, I mean... It's so many different. It's so many different angles. It's too many. It's so many. It's too many. Because, you, like you said, bro, we fail him, man. I'm a, and I'm gonna be real. Like I said yesterday, bro. And my job, I got into it with a young nigga. Had to be about sixteen, seventeen, bro, to the point where I wanted to fight this young man. I took. He took it there with me, and I took it there. And that day, I was pissed off. I went home. I thought about it. It's been on my mind since the shit happened because mm-hmm. me being 27 years old and this young nigga being whatever age he was, I should have been more mature to realize that every action don't need a reaction. And it had to be, I mean, he was talking cash money and shit saying that he was going to shoot me and just talking shit to everybody, just disrespecting, you know what I'm saying, the workplace and the people that's in there and the folks that's using the fame. And my pride wasn't going to let somebody talk to me like that no matter who that was. Now, like I said, when I got home and thought about, man, this nigga young, I remember being 16, 17, talking cash money shit. Ain't gonna do none of it. Talk a whole bunch of them. Ain't gonna do none of that shit. What I should have done in this situation, bro, it had to be a reason why the young man felt like that was the need, the way to act. I mean, he came in being disrespectful to everybody. Like, it was... You know how when you was younger, you can tell some people just come in to dis- disrupt the environment. Mm-hmm. That's what they're there for. Mm-hmm. And that's what he was on. He was seeking some sort of attention. That's the only way that he knew how to get the attention is by acting that way. He wasn't getting that from somewhere else. And for me, to be a black man in a library system, was people, it blows folks' mind, black and white, I like to see a black man in the library, bro, reading the book. I should have been a role model and not an aggressor. I failed that young nigga, bro. To act like that, and all I could have asked him, bro, what's wrong? What happened? Why what you, Why you got to act like that today? Yeah. I had the chance to be that different adult, especially a black man, to him. Instead, mm-hmm. I met him with the same aggression that he probably catch from everywhere else because of how he acts. Yeah. I, I helped the problem and not the person. Right. And it fucks with me. I felt the shit out of him, and I felt the shit out of this young man. See, I don't even know the young man, but I know for a lot of us, especially in our age range, bro, we feel like teenagers so far gone because they did so much shit different from us that we don't want to talk to them. We can't All right, no, nah, them niggas ain't, bro. I can't, I can't deal with, you know what I'm saying? Right. Yeah, we can't and look at it like that, man. The knowledge we like, bro, it's a whole different era. We grew up without a lot of shit they got. Yeah. They not going to have that kind of wisdom. Even at us being 10 years older, bro, you can still teach a person so much younger, nigga. Man, I wrote a poem about that because, like, uh, I was I was in the barbershop before I came over here, and uh, I did this thing where I go around purposely spreading positivity with my spoken word poetry just because we're going to see stuff like this 
all the time, right? Mm-hmm. So what I'm having a, this conversation after I get done with these brothers, and they're saying, you know, oh, well, it starts at the home. His mother should have been teaching him this, blah, blah, blah. And it's like, okay, well, one, one how are we going to say, you know what I'm saying, we're not going to, it's not up to me to have that conversation with that, with that little boy. But CJ, CJ wasn't supposed to hear that from me. He was supposed to hear that from somebody else. And then be okay with saying, well, because his mother didn't say it to him and he didn't get that lesson, it's okay for him to die, right? Because maybe he didn't have a father in the home. Maybe he didn't have an uncle or a grandfather that was right there immediately having that conversation. That's not not to say, oh, well, well, that's cool, I guess, CJ, since he didn't have it, oh, well, that's his fault. No, it's not his fault. It's our fault. Because we need to be, right. We definitely need to be taking the time to have this conversation with the youth, you know what I'm saying, to where they can, you know what I'm saying, even to the point to where they can, like, respond and ask questions and get to some point of understanding. Right, and it's not you just preaching to them, it's people getting in, a young mind getting in. They can express exactly what they feel. CJ can tell you exactly why he was afraid. He can express to you exactly why he did what he did if you just have a conversation with him. And I can tell you a few of the things he'll probably say. He watched police brutality videos for the last six, seven years on his uh, his phone in class and all that stuff. So when he got pulled over by the police, there was a large level of fear associated with what could possibly go exactly. wrong, especially the fact that he was already in the system. You know what I'm saying? That was my first reaction was, did this boy have any reaction or any interaction with these cops or any cops before? I didn't even know he had been arrested or been involved with cops or anything like that before. It makes a difference. It does. So it makes a it does. difference. Even if you don't have that particular interaction yourself, if you see it. Like, I, man, I just saw a video today where there was this black man in a wheelchair, unarmed, gunned down by like six different cops. And they approached him like a SWAT team and basically surrounded him and then just zoned in on him. And then shot the fuck out of him to where he fell out the, the wheelchair. That's fucked up. And I'm like, okay. But we're going to tell CJ not to pull a gun on the police. Are you shitting me? You can't understand why he would be that afraid. Yes, it's a bad idea to pull a gun on the police with no fucking purpose. But you can't understand why he would be that afraid. No one can. No one understands why a 17-year-old would make what we perceive to be such a stupid decision. Not only that, but... Hindsight is always twenty twenty, man. In the heat always. of the in the heat of the moment, ain't no telling what your reaction is. Like I said, bro. Did y'all hear me say the cops was wrong? Did y'all hear me one time mm-hmm. say that they was wrong? Nobody. Mm-hmm. Said I want to make sure I get. Did I? Did I, I want? I didn't say that. I haven't bashed them. I haven't said anything about that. Mm-hmm. All I'm saying is we holding these kids to a higher standard than we holding the police just because the kid had a gun. And him. ourselves. God. Damn it. Yeah. <laughs> I don't understand why that's yeah. so hard for people to understand. Like, you a cop. I had a, I heard a cop say yesterday, I got the power to change your life with the pen, the stroke of my pen. This is my what time. Fuck, what, do you, what do you want me to say? Right. What else am I supposed to say right now? Well, fuck you, you copper. You got the power to change your life with the stroke of your pen, but I'm not supposed to hold you to a higher standard when it's a... High ass situation or or mm-hmm. volatile situation going on. Come on, man. Regardless of if they have been in the situation or not, mm-hmm. supposedly they are trained for this. They are. If you are trained to protect and serve, like Dominique said, if you are trained to protect and serve. The last thing you should be doing is what. So the reality is, they are trained to to like provoke you like that. Right, like the reason why he said that shit to you like that is so you can respond in a fucked up way, and now he will have probable cause to do whatever the fuck he wants to do. Right, there are a few things that happened in that video where uh, the cop actually asked for consent to search the car, right, and the young boy gives him consent to search the car. From that point, now everything else that happens after that is is very trivial because one. He had consent to search the car, not the people in it. You know what I'm saying? They don't. Explain not, that because er, 
Everybody don't understand that, bro. What you well, just said right then, yeah. I want to make sure people heard what you just said. He had consent to search the car and not the people in it. Why is that? Because the car and the people in it are not, I mean, the people in it are human beings. They're not objects that belong, that were placed in the car for you to search like you're searching the car. They have rights of their own, like not having to identify themselves in a traffic stop when they're not the driver, right? Like at that particular point, None of those kids needed to present any identification because they were not driving. But they didn't know that. You know what I'm saying? Like, they didn't know that when he gave him consent to search the car, he could have told him no and prevented everybody from getting out of that car. Nobody knows that. You know what I'm saying? Not at 17 because we're not telling them that. We're not teaching them that. We tell them to pull their pants up. Yeah. You need to walk right, talk right, respect. Yes, right. ma'am. Yes, sir. You need and that's to know. Not helping the situ- I'm not saying you shouldn't pull your pants yeah. up. You shouldn't walk right and respect Please people. Please pull your pants up. Come on, up, man. man. I'm right. a grown ass man with two kids. Yeah, man. Two we kids. Need, I'm not we... gonna teach my sons walk around here with your pants yeah. out your ass. Come no. on. But is that gonna keep them from getting killed out here by cops? No. No. What's <laughs> gonna What's gonna keep them from getting killed out here is giving them the same information the cops have, right? So every cop. Out here is like, well, hmm, I need to know what I am protected by in probable cause so I can know how to maneuver to protect myself. We need to know what it is about these particular tools they're using to now be let off with paid leave and face no consequences. What is it about the situation that's allowing them to do that that we can use to our advantage to prevent that from happening? Right. If they, if they know that they can do this, this and that to get probable cause and now be covered with anything that they do, then we need to know what we need to know to prevent them from even having any probable cause. Right. That's what I feel like, you know, what I'm saying is is an effective way to try to go about it. Now, mind you, that's not foolproof. Like I said, it's not black and white. Knowing exactly what you need to do to keep them from having probable cause is not going to keep you from dying. Exactly. It's not going to work. But shit, I mean, you can do the best you can do. And honestly, if anybody disagrees with that shit, I fucking understand. Because you can do that shit. No, I, I know lawyers. Um, uh, I think, if I'm not mistaken, man, there's two lawyers here in Little Rock that, uh, that were influential in the bill being passed for being able to record cops um, uh, in traffic stops. Then they now get this bill passed to where it's legal to record the police, right? So they're recording the police. The two lawyers that were influential in doing it are now at a traffic stop recording the police, and they get arrested for recording the police. Covered by law. Full. That they made, actually. Right. I remember seeing that on the news. Full. They were fully within their rights, but it still didn't work. I mean, it doesn't matter what you do half the time. Like, But, I mean... Like I said, bro, I I see it on everybody's side, bro. Because if I was, if I was the police in that situation, my life in danger. So I'm gonna have to do what I have to do. I can feel the young man for not wanting to, you know what I'm saying, head that way. And I'm so scared. I would rather, I would rather die than go to jail. Mm-hmm. I can feel that. I'm not nobody. Like I said, nobody gonna walk away from this unscathed. This is one of them things that there's life and then there's real life shit. And this is a real life situation. Right. You feel what I'm saying, man? And like we like I was y'all was hopping on. We failed him, bro. We failed yeah. we failed a lot of young black men out here. We going we gonna stop. I wanna stop talking about CJ. I wanna stop talking about him. That's real. Because at the end of the day, the situation is what it is. It right. happened. It's done. It's not going to come back. Um, what are we going to do in the future? We, I want to talk about us moving forward. What, like I said, we can do as black men with a platform, with an audience, with people that's coming in and that's watching to do something different. I've spent so much time being angry because of the situation that happened. And I finally got it all off my chest. I'm done. Right. I'm done with it. The young man, I'm I, I'm sorry shit happened. I hate that it happened. Rest in peace to his family. Uh, rest in peace to him. Um, 
condolences to his family. Like I said, his mom, all the family members that I that came in contact with, Most and uh, over this week, and sad situation. Mm-hmm. And like I said, all we can do, man, forward is teach our kids better, doing something else besides the negative. Yeah. Like Leo said, putting them in the youth programs, coming up, teaching them how to podcast, how to go live, how to set it up. Like, well, damn. Like, <laughs> drop the mic. How not uh, to do that. Right. Like, like that and all that good stuff, you know. I mean, like you said, bro, we got to we gotta teach. Bro, we, we got to go back. Really to it being old school. And like you say, even though it's a, it's a cliche, man, it takes a village. It really do. Mm-hmm. Y'all don't understand how much you can change a young person's day just by saying hello. You know how many of these kids don't even get talked to at home, nigga? And for somebody from the outside that look like them, man, what's going on, young mm-hmm. man? What's going, you know what I'm saying? That respect, bro, because whether or not you want to believe it, even though we grown men, them men too. Right, man. That's still a man, 16, yeah. 17, 18. You, you a teenager, way. nigga, but you... In 2018. You, yourself, bro. you know yeah. what I'm saying? You coming into that, bro. Just... We need to just respect each other more as a race, bro. We need to get back to that old school way of just being there from each other, man. Being like more of a community, community-minded community type people, bro. Everybody's so out for themselves and want to make a name for themselves. Nobody. That's what I feel, bro. Nobody yeah. want to really, you know what I'm saying, network and get to know each other. And you know what's really, we can say it ain't no family unit. And it's some people that got large families, bro. I don't even know the last time I've been to a family reunion. Man. I don't know the last time I went to Man. We used to go to them all the time when I was younger, but that, in such a short time, I can even say from the 90s to now, we done lost a whole lot of shit as a race as far as being, a family unit and having shit and like you know what I'm saying Sunday dinners at grandma house and shit like like the 60s bro before yeah. it was really us yeah and I'm saying us as collectively cause you black people especially but I mean the world and we gotta we gotta cherish each other bro man, everybody crazy. means something to somebody yeah you know what I'm saying man but especially black people we just we wanna cast off our youth Cause motherfucker did it to me, so I I can feel like somebody feeling like you hopeless because you a young black man and you act a certain way. Right, I can feel that, bro. So check this yeah. out. Uh, we say things like it takes a village, but do we really believe it? In a time when helping guide someone else's child is so desperately needed, let some elder offer your child assistance, and our first response is to present a defense level of resistance. But if we're to have faith in our elders when seeking guidance, why must we defend the next generation from an elder that lacks patience? With all this confusion, I can imagine a broken village surviving the weight of Uncle Sam's rape and pillage. If we were to just open our eyes, we could realize that divide and conquer is the reason our homes are missing fathers. A single mother has to raise a family on her own while her brother is pretending to be the dad. And nobody wants to help a child with no parent. Because if it ain't about me and mine, it's going to make my problems apparent and I can't have these things being displayed on the surface. Therefore, I can't be myself and I'll never understand purpose. And with all these breaks, kids are out here looking to the streets for some sense of belonging. After their families have been stripped from them, their last resort is to select a family of their own choosing. A limited resource grouping. Losing sight of the fact that we're all trying to build circles with broken pieces. Ultimately, our peace is vulnerable. No wonder we're ready to die for the color of our vest. After our broken circles have been shattered, we've got nothing left. So I wonder, what would happen if I asked you how you were doing and you could be completely honest with me? Releasing the weight of all catastrophe. In the right situation, it would probably save all our lives. Imagine, I'm getting robbed and this man is so desperate he makes his point blank. He has no idea. At this point... I'm going to do whatever I got to do to survive. No concern for cool points. Caught up in this crunch time, I missed something. The point. Instead of asking him how he was doing, I was so afraid of him, I went for the gun. The struggle continues and we wrestle back and forth. I can see the pain in his eyes. They reflect the fear in mine. That image will forever be etched in my mind. Even after I took his life, I still wonder, 
What if I just asked him? Maybe he'd have put the gun down. Maybe we both still be here. Maybe we be sitting here sharing the beer. But that's a little something I wrote, man, because it's like, you know, bruh, what 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 can we do to, you know what I'm saying, respond a little differently, man? That's exactly what this uh fam just said. Michelle said, What ways do you all see to reach the troubled youth? A lot of these young guys are not willing to do these after school programs because they think it will make them look soft. That's when us as men, we got to step in and stop that and do more. Which I'm really (laughs) trying to understand, you know, how to get to that level with young men. Because with young black men that are traumatized, that do experience PTSD and all the stuff that's going on um, at the home or whatever through the situation. Like you said, having to play a father figure Mm -hmm. to a sister or vice versa. Mm -hmm. Um. It takes time when it comes to stuff like that, especially when it comes to young black men, because they're not just gonna open that 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 door up right. to you just off top because yeah. you just coming in there. I'm here to help you, right. and you gotta build a relationship. We gotta start with building relationships with with these young men um, that we feel are distracted or mm-hmm. or or at the edge and you know, can't come back or the point of no return or whatever and quit. Turning them away mm-hmm. and and making them turn to do dumb stuff, the streets, drugs, mm-hmm. and all this other stuff that that's gonna lead you to a life of death or in prison. I'm a father, and my worst fear is what happened. My worst fear is me not being. A, example for them like it's up to me to be uh the example for my my my, my guys because honestly I'm not gonna lie to y'all I don't know what to tell them I don't know what to tell them when it comes to dealing with the cops I don't mm-hmm. know what to say I can say and say and say all day but once you're in this situation you don't know what's gonna happen you gotta again. improvise make it up for yourself you don't know what's gonna happen <laughs> We've all experienced different situations with the police. Man. Now, what I can do is tell you my situation and my story. I was arrested when I was 17, 18, because I was doing dumb shit. I was out here stealing stuff from a job that I worked at, and it was some real deal stuff, like some high-quality stuff, and I was selling it, and it was just bad. You know, <laughs> but bad decisions right. lead to... Prison, well, jail. Next step is prison, but an arrest. Uh, and once you get an arrest, you get a record. And once you get a record, you get nothing else after that. It's life is hard on you when you have a record, and they set it up so easily for us to. It's hard on you <laughs> when you have a record. Is life is ten times harder on you when you have a record. If you're young and you listen to this, I'm telling you, I just went to jail. Yeah. And do you know how hard it was for me to find a job? Something as simple as a failure to appear. A misdemeanor. Yeah. You can't get a job. <laughs> Nobody's gonna hire you. Mm-mm-mm. It's a wrap. And I want to stress that I've been there. Right. I'm not talking about something that I haven't done. Now, was I out there? No. But I was a black man that did stupid shit and made stupid decisions. I got one for that too. And if I if I can tell somebody to not do what I did, not be stupid, don't risk your life, don't risk your opportunities with being a better man, your, your whole my whole future was ahead of me. I didn't see that. Like you said, I was just living for two days trying mm-hmm. to get to some money. Right. Because I'm out here on my own trying to pay bills and I got to have something to do something right. Right. And temptation set in and I've messed up and I've done something stupid. Now, what if that situation would have messed up my whole life? I would have been judged off that one situation for the rest of my life. 
And that's not fair. And I'm not saying that that's not that's it was my it would have been my fault. Mm-hmm. I'm trying to stop that from happening from other people. Right. You go ahead, bro. You tell your story. See, and I tell folks this story all the time. Background on me, I'm pretty much a you know a clean cut dude. I ain't really done too much dumb shit, except some pharmaceuticals here and there, and sometimes the devil's lettuce here and there. But you know it is what it is. Devil's uh, lettuce. The devil's lettuce. <laughs> but uh, man, when I was younger, this had to be when I was about I was either sixteen or seventeen. Two parent household. Mom was a principal. My dad worked a factory job. Mm-hmm. I went to school with my moms for a long time. New people throughout the school district, shit like that. You feel what I'm saying? So that's, I'm just giving you a background. So when I tell this story, you can see the situation where I come from and what the fuck happened and see how shit can get real. Now, I'm in the house chilling on a Halloween night. I get a call from my friends. They're coming down the street. We mobbed together. I say mobbed together. We got into a group. And we went out and we did dumb teenager shit on Halloween. <laughs> Hitting mailboxes with bats and shit. May or may not have fireworks. May or may not have done things for the property. So, at this time, we walking home. I'm coming, and y'all from the Roxy, y'all know. Anybody out there is from Little Rock, you don't know exactly where I'm at. I'm coming up baseline, passing Quail Valley, uh, almost at rallies. Rallies on my left hand side. It's me, it's probably about 10 other people. Mm-hmm. We see blue lights and cops shooting up the fucking street. We walking on the curb. They done swung on the sidewalk, opened their doors, hopped out, put the lights on this nigga, had their guns drawn. Terrified. Had their guns drawn, nigga. Wasn't no warning or nothing. Everybody put their hands up. So we done threw all that shit. Everybody put their hands up. Just so happened, earlier that night, we ran into a police officer who was looking for a little kid on, on the block where I stayed at. He was the first car on the fucking curb and said, nah, that's not them. It was a shooting in Quail Valley, nigga. At the same time, we was out doing dumb shit. We just happened to be a group of black kids walking up the fucking street. They didn't know we was doing dumb shit. Other situations occurred, and they seen us. Pulled on the curb, hopped out with guns, nigga. Everybody had guns on them. Everybody had lights. When that cop said, no, I know them. They good. Do you know the relief I felt? I nigga, it was my it was my do. fucking senior year, bro. That could have been it. And not only that, bro. When that happened, it they didn't leave for a while. So it's people, cars slowing down, watching what's going on. Right. And the most embarrassing part was a woman, other than because I'm thinking past the guns and shit. I don't even know how I thought I was gonna get out of this situation. A woman rolled by. She rolled her window down, looked out the car. Oh, I thought that was my son. I ain't even think my parents could ride down the fucking street and see me in this dumb shit. One bad decision, bro. That's all it takes. One. And, and we would have been the victims in that case. Of course, we was out doing dumb shit, but we had nothing to do with the actual shooting that was taking place, bro. Just shit like that. Everybody got different encounters, man. You out being doing the, doing the dumb shit still doesn't like justify you getting killed. Right. It, like never ever does like a bad decision justify you like being gunned down like that shit get real bro that's all I'm saying situations happen now mine completely different from that but in the blink of an eye bro your whole life can change with some shit that's all I can say and that is still probably one of the most scariest nights of my life not only that after that happened, we all split up. I went off and did some more dumb shit. <laughs> so I, I, I went, I went to the damn little season. It took, it took, it took, it took a while. <laughs> it took a while. Exactly, that's the I point. Woo, well, we done made it. I'm about to go out here and do some other that's shit. That's the point. It takes a while to get it, man. <laughs> right, right after that, bro. Like yeah. immediately after that, I'm in in little Caesar's parking lot talking to my homeboy, and I'm just burning paper. You know, you remember when the police used to sit. Where uh where Carrie's at, they're building off on the cut, that little gap right there. There used to be a, a hair store and shit. Mm-hmm. My nigga told me, he said, bro, it's a police officer over there. He's going to come over here and say something to you. I said, man, fuck that. I'm sitting here. I got lighters. And I ain't supposed to be having no damn lighter. Right. Burning a bunch of shit. Woo! Excuse me, sir. Hey, man. <laughs> Chill out. Yeah. I said, all right, bro. About that time, my sister blew my motherfucking phone up and cursed me out because I'm supposed to be at home and shit, bro. It's a school night. So much... 
you're young when you're 17, and you make a lot of dumb decisions, man. Uh, youth is bliss, and youth is also ignorance. And I was ignorant as fuck that night. So I can see situations where people get caught up and they change their lives, man. Mm-hmm. It's shit crazy. Life get real. Life get real. Tosha says, do you want the help, but they're afraid of how others will see them? Right. They, they do hold that shit uh, to them, bro. Oh, my alarm's over here going on. We got to be careful how we, like, address the youth. Because one thing we, like, fail to do a lot of times is, like, the older generations and I I get a lot of this when I'm trying to like be a you know black leader or whatever you know I'm saying like trying to give back to the community or whatever it is you want to call it like reaching out to older people in the uh, community who may be doing some of the same things there's this whole like you know oh well you a young nigga and you're gonna have to work like for this 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 information uh i've been out here doing it 50 60 years 75 and i'll be damned if you you get it you know just because i gave it to you you're gonna have to put in this 60 75 years worth of hard work that i put in to get it too and that's a problem because um we're missing a lot of people with that i mean <clears throat> the whole reason for you to go through that 60 75 years of whatever you went through was to pass it on to somebody so why would you fail like why would you miss your whole purpose That's selfish, kind of it thing. is very yeah. selfish it is very selfish um but yeah man like we miss we miss that all right, man. We ain't been on this heavy stuff for a while. <laughs> oh, wow. it's, been a, it's been a heavy night, boy. It's just all the conduct. But it's like a grenade went off in here. Man, man, I could not pass this up this week and just let that pass by and gloss over the situation. Like mm-hmm. it doesn't affect me and how I feel and how I look at my sons when I see them, and I just pray that I can teach them. The, the best way that I know how. So let me ask you this then. Would you tell, would you allow your sons to, uh, be modeled, uh, uh like that boy <laughs> from H&M? Would I have, would I have allowed my sons to be modeled? Would you, would you have I signed, would, a, my sons to be modeled. would you have signed a contract to, to, to a have contract your, giving that image to them for the rest of them? No. The same, the Ew. same way that boy's parents did. Ew. No. So yeah, that was definitely an oversight on the company, on the parents, on everybody. Okay, the lady say for well, how much money y'all say y'all was signing y'all kids up for? The mama, well, the mama signed the contract for a million dollars. Oh, the mama. Okay, I'm sorry. I don't want to put words in y'all. Man. She say the she mama say signed uh, the contract for a million dollars. She right? say everybody tripping. That say everybody that says that boy should have been on the ad. She say y'all tripping. And what's funny is when I first saw that thing, I was like, you know what? He wouldn't have been on there if his mom and daddy didn't let him on there. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like, so if anybody should be upset, it ain't being upset about H&M or none of this shit. It's, hey, his mama put him up there. Like, she did it willingly. She made that decision. So, shit, that's. I mean. But half off everything? I mean. That's why I shot. <laughs> You won't half off of every that's T-shirt right. that says you the best monkey in and this the, motherfucking the world. That's what I said. That's yeah. what I said. I said, damn. All right. We fucked up, y'all. You can get half off on this shirt and say, who's well, monkey? Uh, <laughs> I'm in the jungle. Well, I'm a, uh, yeah. We still need your money. Keep but then also, don't be out here be like, sit your monkey ass down. <laughs> and then like, and then be mad. And then be mad at <laughs> fucking yeah. H. Right, right. right. Shut, <laughs> like, shut your ass up. Like, you know. Man, we got this segment where I call screenshot segment. I ain't really got no official name yet. It's just screenshots. Where I pull people's screenshots uh, that I see or something that somebody says that's interesting <laughs> on the internet. Okay. And I pull it off the internet. I don't, I don't say names. I don't do that. I don't blast people. We don't but, do that. But I do use what you say in my show. And uh, this first one is, many men fear not being enough for a woman. So they subconsciously sabotage their own relationship because they lack self love. Um, what do y'all think about that? 
Do I need to repeat it? I was gonna ask you to repeat the question. Okay, let me it's like it's like Queen. Hey, 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 hey! If I gotta repeat, <laughs> that's what we gotta do. Many men fear not being enough for a woman, so they subconsciously subconsciously sabotage their own relationships because they lack self love. Do yeah. you agree or disagree? I can. I feel that. I can definitely feel that, bro. Um, because when you can't love yourself, you can't love another person. So if you feel like you're not enough, if you feel like you're not enough to yourself, it ain't no way you're going to be able to be with a woman and be like, and feel like she fine if you're not fine with yourself. If you feel like you're lacking something as a man, ain't no way you're going to be able to take care of a woman and you're going to feel mm-hmm. like, fuck, I can't do nothing. Damn it, I ain't got what? She ain't going to like this shit. I can't deal with her, bro. It's a, I don't, I, a lot of people also beat themselves up, bro. Mm, yeah, so, of, yeah. And I'm I'm a victim of that. I'm yeah. the hardest person on myself, nigga. I could do 100% things right, and I'll find some shit wrong. And it's never enough of what I'm doing. Yeah. So I can see see myself projecting that onto somebody. And when yeah. I do that, I always apologize because it's not them I'm mad at. Or I'm, mm-hmm. upset with, I'm upset with myself. I'm upset that you find with me feeling like I'm not enough. Even though you don't know that. You accept, you accept me for me right now, but I feel like I'm not doing enough and it bothers me that you think that that shit okay. It's a, it's a weird mindset. But that self-hatred is real, bro. And not feeling like you enough, that shit is a hundred. That would take you out of the game some days, bro. Some days, I still struggle with this shit now. And some days I wake up and be like, damn it, you gotta do this shit. It's you again. You didn't wake up as Will Smith for nothing. Fuck. Yeah, it's you crazy. Know, you know what I'm saying? Like... Shit like that, man. Yeah. I can I can feel that. I feel that. I definitely feel like it's some it's some truth in there. Um, there's there's levels to to everything, man. But like you know, there's a situation where you know you have to be um, firm in yourself enough to know, regardless of whoever or whatever may be suggesting. That you are not enough. Right. You know what I'm saying? You know within the deepest parts of yourself that you are doing enough. You know that you are sufficient and you stay grounded in that, right? But, you know what I'm saying? It's levels. It's layers. Because, I mean, don't put yourself in a situation where you got to sit next to a person that's going to tell you you're not doing enough every day to compromise your, your, your you know what I'm saying, personal right. state of being to where now you start second guessing and you no longer feel confident in the fact that you know you're doing enough. Do not put yourself in that situation. Do not allow that to go on in your life. You know what I'm saying? And that's part of knowing that you're good enough because when you know that you're good enough, you're not going to allow that shit to sit next to you. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be like, you know what? Fuck all that shit you're saying. I know goddamn well I'm doing what I'm supposed to be doing, so shut the fuck up or keep it moving. You know what I'm saying? But that's part of, like, knowing that you are enough. And it's, like, it's it's many layers to that shit because um, it starts with, like, like you said, loving yourself. You know what I'm saying? You have to know who you are before you can start existing around other people because whether that woman is there or not, are you going to be enough? Like, it's not even just about being enough for her. Are you about it enough for when ain't shit else here? Are you enough for yourself? You know what I'm saying? From there, then you can say, okay, maybe now I understand I, I, I'm enough for me. Okay, yeah, I'm enough for everybody out here. I don't give a fuck. And anybody that wants to fucking sit next to me, I'm not going to have to do all extra nothing because I'm already enough for them to be here. Yes, you know what I'm saying? My life is going to be a hell of a lot easier if you and I can sit here and actually operate on, like, the same fucking frequency. That shit is going to make things ten times easier. But if we can't work like that, I'm not going to fucking sit here and force you to do it. You know what I'm saying? Because I am sufficient enough for this to work with somebody. You know what I'm saying? If you, uh... If you... Ask a young lady to move in with you. Do you expect her <clears throat> to split the bills with you? If you ask a young woman to move in with you, do you expect her to split the bills with you? Straight up. Let's right? get into it. Let's get into it. 
I asked her to move in with me. You asked her to move in with you. Do you expect her to split the bills with you? Here's my thing. <laughs> <laughs> We're in a relationship, right? So there's a partnership. There's <laughs> a partnership. We got to make things work together. We got to come together. I don't see nothing wrong with spending no bills. That's just me. You moved in with me. I love you to death. <laughs> gotta keep this heat on. Gotta keep this lights on. Gotta keep this good ass cable because you wanna watch all your uh, Grey's Anatomy and shit and cry. Well, then. I don't see nothing wrong. I don't see nothing wrong with that. We a partnership. I don't see We're paying bills time to time. I don't, see, I, don't, I don't see. I don't see. Bills from time to time. Oh man, that's dope. I don't see nothing, nothing wrong. wrong. I don't see nothing wrong. Oh. Uh, With paying bills, right. time to time. I mean, it is what it is. I feel like that's how a relationship should work, man. Because when you get dependent on one person to keep doing everything, the motherfucker may get tired of it. And when he say no, <laughs> what you gonna do? You gonna lose your Grey's Anatomy? Now you can't be saying. All I'm saying is. Split them bills. Yeah. Split them bills. I, I believe it goes vice versa. But then also, it, it involves, like, I mean, here we go back to this layer shit. Because, <laughs> like. Gets you with the layers. Man, because, like, it takes, it takes, it takes communication, man. Like, you need to be able to have a conversation with your partner and be open and honest to where you can say, all right, this is what we're going to agree to. You know what I'm saying? You need to be able to have a conversation and be open and honest with your partner when you failed to say, damn, you know, uh, I, I was supposed to have that car insurance payment paid by such and such, such and such, but that shit didn't happen this time. I'm a little late. I got it on the last round, but I'm still catching up. We need to be open enough to where I can tell you that shit. And it not be no all oh, cool. right. Yeah. Well, I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying. I'm not saying it's got to be cool, right? <laughs> right. Because, 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 like we. I'm not saying it's got to be cool. I'm saying we, we as men, we as women, and it's vice versa. Like we, whenever you fail, right, you have to get back up and do better, right. But you need to be able to have that conversation with your partner, especially. Because if not, you know what I'm saying, you're going that's when you start getting those second guessing and you start feeling like, Oh, maybe I'm I'm not enough, you know? Like because I can't even open up to this person. And as a result of not being able to open up to this person, that person now can't open up to me. Because I'm not i I'm damn sure not gonna let you open up to me if I can't open up to you. You know what I'm saying? All right. And that's just, I mean, I think that's subconscious. Even if you want to, you're not going to because you're going to feel some type of way about being like, damn, this motherfucker talking to me about all the shit they got going on every day. But nigga, my fucking, you know what I'm saying? My grandma, my grandma just died. And I can't ever talk to you about none of this shit, man. Fuck talking to you about anything. You can't open up to me, motherfucker, because I can't open up, you know, right? Like, you build this type of resentment. Like, so when it comes to shit like that, man, like, being able to communicate, like, yeah. Let's we're gonna split these bills fifty fifty. All right, cool. Let's do that. Right. But if if that shit comes down to where you you can only put up, you know what I'm saying, thirty five this month. You know what I'm saying? Say that shit. And when that shit happens, you know what I'm saying? Say that shit in enough time to where that thirty five percent can be picked up and y'all can work something out. You know what I'm saying? And then next month, nigga had a fifty. But like, you know what I'm saying? Right. It's like it's a matter of you know what I'm saying? Communicating and, and building towards it. Right. And then and it's actually certain components that can be missing to where it will prevent you from like wanting to even do better. Like when you fail and you feel like you can't even talk to this person about you know what I'm saying? You like, damn, well shit, like, man. You, and then you're gonna keep on failing. You know what I'm saying? And it's about that, that mindset where that person might have responded to say, Well, because you failed you ain't enough, right? Now you start second, you're guessing yourself, and you're like, well, damn, because now I'm, I'm not enough. Now you continually fail. I feel that. Because you can't even open up about, you know what I'm saying? Be real. Right. All a woman wants you to do is be real at the end of the day, whether you're right or whether you're wrong. I think at the end of the day, um, if you come to them real from the beginning and from jump, and you just be honest and open, man, that's mm-hmm. really the truth. Key to all of it, whether you're in the wrong or not. If you get caught doing some shit, just 
Admit the shit. Man. Be 100 and admit the shit. A lot of men, man, we do a lot of fucked up shit out here, and then it's, the shit get brought to us, and then we, uh, nah. Be well, a man. Black men don't cheat. Shit. You know what I'm saying? Black men don't black cheat. Black men don't cheat. Right. right. There you go. You know Hashtag black. Black, black men don't cheat. <laughs> Hey man, uh, we just out here having some fun. I think I got one. I think uh, it was it was one I wanted to get to. It was a special special one from this uh, special brother of mine. Let me see if I can find it. In the meantime, let me uh, find this one, ladies. Your man eat first. End of discussion. You fix his play first. My girl taught me that when we first met. Hold on, what? That's the screenshot. It's still, you know, I'm pulling off screenshots. Think, uh... A young man says, ladies, <laughs> your man eat first. End of discussion. Sure, you fix his play first. Dude, no, he said, you fix his play first. My girl taught me that when we first met. Is that true, ladies? Should a lady have to fix his play? To fix the man's play first. Before the kid. You feed your man before you feed the kids. The big piece of chicken. The big piece of chicken. The big piece. You want to come over here? We got to know. We got to know. We got ladies in here. Who who wants to? Either one of y'all? There's no right or wrong answer. Kids. Kids eat first. Kids eat first. That makes a lot of sense. Makes because sense. they are the I'm future. They are the like, future. Uh, whoever gets to the kitchen first. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody baby got to a pot. Yeah, goddamn. That was the last week of wine roll. Yeah. I'm mad at you right now. I also, I also, I also feel like, I feel like it's also 2018. So yeah, there's a large level of whoever gets down here first. Like if if you up there on the Xbox and you won't bring your ass down here, man, Daddy finna eat, goddamn. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> and it also, likewise, if daddy won't get his ass up from the game and come to this motherfucking kitchen, he ain't going to get it. Ain't gonna get well, it. You know what I'm saying? Right. You're right. You're right. You're right. Listen, you goddamn right. that. Uh, I don't give a shit what time it is. What time I come Nigga, I'm not finna bring you this plate on the toilet. If I, damn it, them kids, they can eat first. I'm not saying don't eat. <laughs> but, uh, big piece of chicken, Right, right. <laughs> If I say I like, if I say I like thighs, I better have some thighs, nigga. My mama came and woke me up in the middle of the night, brother, and was like, "Turn the lights on." Excuse me. Did you eat the big piece? Oh damn! I was like, nigga, nigga, feel like he on Law and Order being interrogated now, like. Right. Let me see your hands. We need to take fingerprints. Season it and then refry. It's gotta be done before he go to bed. Hey, all I'm saying is, you know, it don't have to be first, man. Let me see what I got. Let me see what we got here with these comments. We haven't been getting to these comments. Sheldon says, Char says. Hold on. Let me get back. From the male perspective, what would you tell your sister if she married a man who refuses to work? The original plan was split bills, but he didn't hold up his end. Then what? Then this time to dismiss that sorry ass nigga from the equation. <laughs> and that's my sister too. Yeah. I'm sorry, sister. Yeah. We, yeah, we gotta dismiss. Yeah. We gonna have to. If he's not doing anything, there's no plan. There's nothing. If there's nothing then at too, all, then too. Let's just keep it all the way 100. I'm going to say it. And I'm going to piss some people off when I say it, but I'm going to say it. Some of y'all women like sorry ass men. That's real. That's real. So they're going to they gonna continue to do it regardless of whatever we say. We can like say, we can say, like this is how you avoid that shit from happening. Wait, because you see potential in them. Wait. Because you see greatness in them. But let's not point the finger here. <laughs> Let's not. Want to build them up and fix them. But let's not point the finger here. No, no, you know? we ain't pointing the finger. Because we we can say we can say we can say all day that there's women out here trying to fix niggas and Captain Saver niggas and all yep. this shit and they putting right. We can say that all day, right? But this Captain Saver hoes out here too. You know, what? You know what I'm saying? And they there's people out here, purpose, <laughs> right? And so rather than 
Right. Right. Rather than, you know, you're getting caught up in this, you know what I'm saying, uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe and DC movie. Everybody getting caught up in donning the cape and, you know, getting their origin story or how they saved the motherfucker. Stop worrying about that shit, man. Leave it alone. What's in it for me? You know what I'm saying? Once you get that and you're good, you know what I'm saying, you're going to get what's good for you every time. Then you're going to find a motherfucker and you're going to like, you're not going to be satisfied until you're getting enough from that person. Right. But then, you know what I'm saying, if you, I mean. And oh, yeah, we got a real deal situation going what's on. What's going on? What's going on? What's up? What's up? Miss Shars actually has some real problems over here. We're gonna get, we're gonna uh, work this out. Oh, oh damn! On, oh up. shit! We're coming well, to the rest. We go, let me go back. Let me go I back. Do, let me I do. I call back myself a philosopher, but I can't. It said, from a male perspective, <clears throat> what would you tell your sister if she married a man who refuses to work? <laughs> the original plan was to split bills, but he did not hold up his end of the bargain. Mister Fortenberry said, then he needs to roll. Share cuts if he is not trying, which we all agree with. Mm-hmm. Um, she said. Shelton, he said he won't leave. He wants to own business, but doesn't put in much effort to make it successful. Mm-hmm. Then Shelton says that he does not want his own business if he is not trying. Right. Mm-hmm. She replies, <laughs> he tries, but there is not enough money coming in to actually help with the household bills. That's a problem right there. But you said, we said, is he, <laughs> she just said he's trying. He's trying. She yeah. just said he's trying. So we, we we went back and said, if he's not doing nothing, get that nigga the fuck up out of here. Then we said, if he's got a plan. Now, mind you, trying and doing are two different things. Two different things. Okay. Right? Okay. So if the brother is, it's a difference in being in the process and, you know what I'm saying, building and actually building. Versus, like, you know deep inside you're not doing enough. You're not giving it 100%. You're not giving it enough effort to even yield a result. If you are not doing that, you know what I'm saying, if if you feel like that's not what's happening, you know what I'm saying, now there's a different level of whether or not that person is actually doing those things and you're not giving them the credit for that shit because you can't see their struggle. You don't know what they're hustling on. You don't know the work. Now, you will be able to see some results after some point if a person is actually putting in work. But I'm saying you got to be able to understand the different sides of the coin. So, like, if you're going to sit here and say he is trying, is he trying or is he doing? Is it what? Because, right, I mean, one on one hand, you're saying he ain't doing nothing. But now you're saying he's doing Sorry, something. Yeah. I, so which one is it? I can see the confusion. Look, here's my <clears> thing. Um, My mama taught me. That sounded so country. <laughs> we from Arkansas, y'all. If you just watch and, and you can right, tell. Right. 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 My yeah. mama taught me this <laughs> phrase. Hustle while you wait. Now, okay. Okay. my, I really want to be a DJ. <clears throat> like, that's my shit. I love to turn that with a mixer. I got the big ass wax at the house and everything, too. I want that to be my own business. Mm-hmm. At the same time, in reality, I know at the at the time right now, this is not a constant money flow. Now, I'm staying up under this person's roof. I feel like... I'm not saying dash your dreams, but at some point, you're going to have to work something. You know what I'm saying? Just to make ends meet, bro. And that could be money going towards your business to build a better switch, so you don't have to do that. But to... If he... Because I don't know the situation, like you mm-hmm. said. I don't know the situation. Mm-hmm. But if he's just wanting to own his own business and not bringing enough money and just doing nothing other than the fact of making money through his business, which is not going that great, or doing whatever, you need to have a job, brother. You got to have, job, you gotta have some kind of income coming you gotta in. Get a job, and put some of brother. that money towards your business and make that bitch big, because I... Hey, you can have a job in a dream. Yeah. Don't act like you can't have a job in a dream in 2018. In 2018. Yeah. But there's also a level to that, too, man, because, I mean, ultimately, sir, there's some people out here who cannot devote what they need to devote to their dream while they're working for somebody else. Now, mind you, that's not everybody, True. right? But there are people out here who, as long as they're going and applying for jobs and getting fired every day, you and you can't, you can't even, you can't even, you know what I'm saying, devote 
enough of what you need to vote to, to devote to your dream because you're putting so much effort into building something for somebody else. And every time you're doing what you're supposed to do by going and giving to these other businesses and working on that while you build your own shit. But every time you try to do it, it doesn't work because you get fired for being too good at doing the shit. People see you got too much hustle trying to build your own shit while you work for them, so they're not going to allow you, right? Whatever the case may be, maybe you get hired by some racist motherfucker who chooses to call you a boy one day, and you're like, man, I can't take this shit because I'm finna beat your ass, right. right? But, like, it doesn't, like, whatever the case may be, sometimes that might not, right? Like, there's one person out here who cannot put enough into building their dream while they work with somebody else. And I feel that 100%, <clears throat> but... I feel that totally, but I just, I don't know. I just couldn't be a nigga that could stay up under somebody's roof and not contribute, contribute something. Yeah. Something. Yeah. You know yeah. what I'm saying? If, but but that person. Through his business. Mm-hmm. I don't, that person is going to get that money through their business. Yeah. That person who cannot work for someone else and be able to put it into their dream, Most they will put into their dream enough to be yielding that. I you know what I'm saying? It. Now, mind you, it's a process sometimes. I'm yeah. not going to say that shit just going to. Having over, you can't, you can't, you know what I'm saying. Make right. a decision to do something without oh, well, educating yourself. Yeah, because you listen to right. You yeah, don't, no, 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 no. So Man, check this out. You know, you know, as you know, as building this podcast, you know what I'm saying. It's it's certain Man. research and things you had to, you know what I'm saying, need to figure out before you even get started on that road. Whatever it is you do, you need to be figuring out, studying the the industry, getting some information. So if you're gonna make that leap, you know enough. To actually bring that money in. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm having to learn to be a better salesman. You know what I'm saying? As an entrepreneur. You know what I'm saying? Like, and there's certain things about being a salesman that you have to know about how to master objections. Anything a person says in response and rebuttal to what you're presenting to them, if you allow that to stop you from closing, it's because you did not have enough information to deal with that objection. You need to know that when you're trying to be an entrepreneur and you need to know how to master those objections. So every time somebody says, oh, well, your price is a little bit high or, you know what I'm saying, whatever the case may be, you need to know to be able to how what you got to do to master that. You know what I'm saying? And if you're jumping out here not knowing that shit, then you're you're not going to be doing, you're not going to be successful. We don't have no videos, bro. We ain't got no video. The video went out. Just say the video ain't live. No <laughs> you know, the screen over there, babe, open up. But, hey. Yeah. Hey, we went in, man. The yeah. audio's still recording. So That's good. That's good. Go ahead and the live video shit. Bro. Already. We made that work. Boy. Nice. We ain't talking to people. Nice. He ended that real disrespectful race. <laughs> 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 Enough. Yeah, yeah. At this point, man, listen. 3K views though for us. Really? Hey, we had three. That's what you need. One good. 3K? I think I went through like my whole 5,000 friends. <laughs> I was just invite, 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 invite. And invite. we thank you for that. 3K. We appreciate that work you put in. Three K. <laughs> you didn't have to take the white people out. We appreciate. Hey, the they white can people. they can hear it. They re, they respect us for feeling convicted as we feel. You know, just the same right. way as people being like Donald Trump speaks his mind. One hundred eleven comments. That's, that's the most common interaction, man. During the during live. Let me make sure we wrap this up the correct way, man. Gonna lock this on out. Uh, Tell them where like to I find said, you, bro, man. You, man. You came through, bro. You knocked it out, bro. You know, you, you oh, did your appreciate thing. You, man. Man. Always, bro. Appreciate you, man. We appreciate you for coming word, through. Word. And giving your time and energy and effort, bro. Dealing word. with us and our technical difficulties. Though. Hey, man, it's fun. It's fun. Man, it's, <laughs> it's fun. It's fun. It, yeah. it, you, I'm gonna remember these moments. Like, you you know, building your own brand yeah. and all this stuff. You're gonna yeah. remember the moments when shit like this happened. Yeah, because like we said, we started on the ground. Man, man boy, we got a table. You got to start somewhere, <laughs> man. You got to start somewhere. So, bro, yeah. Before we get up out of here, man, I want you to shout out your social media, anything okay. you got going on, upcoming events, how people can get in touch with you. Word, okay. So, uh, getting to the blurred philosopher, friendly neighborhood, nobody, the Negro Jedi, Black Shinobi. Uh, Locks Luther, if you will. Uh, you can find me on Facebook and Instagram. At Blurred Sage, that's uh, Black Nerd, right? Blurred Sage, B L E R D S A G E, uh, on both Facebook and Instagram. Uh, I'm actually on the podcast as well, so uh, you guys yeah. should check us out every Sunday from 8 p.m. 
to 10 p.m. Uh, Central Standard Time uh, at the Real Underground Radio Station. You can tune in from the Real Underground Radio, or excuse me, the Real Underground dot com, or you can check out the Real Underground Radio app on iTunes, uh, Windows, and Google Play. Um, and that's every Sunday from 8 p.m. to 9 or to 10 p.m. And we have like all kinds of dope conversations. We talk about some of the same things we talk about here. Uh, I get a little bit more, you know, very dope. liberal with my opinions on that one because, you know, I'm just going to say whatever the fuck I want to say. You know what I'm saying? You can say whatever the yeah, fuck you yeah, want to say. Right. Yeah, we don't care. Right. <laughs> but, you know, the idea is that, you know what I'm saying, we can all, dis- we can ag- we can agree to disagree right, and right. I still get to some point of, get you know, somebody. moving forward. So, uh, you guys can find that on Instagram and Facebook at the nappy. It's all lowercase, uh, T H E E R excuse me, I'm tripping. T H E N A P P Y. And there's a dot between every letter, except you don't put one before the T and you don't put one after the Y. And that's where you find the show. Got all kinds of dope stuff. If you ain't looking, you ain't trying. Right. <laughs> right. Exactly. DJ Harlem man, brother, once again you came through. Oh, yeah. Knocked it out. Go ahead. I forgot to tell you guys about an event. Uh, So tomorrow, there's a citywide re-up. And it's happening. It's uh, being put together by the West Central Park uh, administrators and the Brandon House over off of 12th Street. There is an event called the Citywide Re-Up that's for all high school students. You can come and get some supplies. They got some dope resources being passed out to the youth to inspire people to chase their dreams and how to be an entrepreneur, how to, you know what I'm saying, balance the job and all that stuff. And there's also a Hoops Hoops Life basketball tournament for three-on-three if you want to come and win a couple of prizes. Um, And we'll be having a panel actually about the police brutality and what to uh, actually say to the youth about how to maneuver these situations to prevent the things like what happened with CJ. So that's happening tomorrow, uh, January the 13th, at the West Central Park um, gym uh, off of John Barrow. Uh, you guys can come and check that out. It's going to be an all-day event. I believe it starts at like 10 or 11. So come through and check it out. It's free to the public or, or to the to the youth. Uh, I believe there's like a, a entry fee for the tournament and all that. But definitely come and check it out, man. It's, uh, it's dope stuff. Once again, bro, we appreciate you coming through and holding it down, man. DJ Harlow, what you got going on the rest of this week, man? You chilling this weekend? Hey, what you man. doing? Three-day weekend and that thing. Three-day weekend. Hey, hold on one weekend. time. One top of my day. King, y'all. Uh, yeah, yeah. Not even the day, just the person. You feel what I'm Speak saying? But it just happened to get a day up out of there, which is weird, because I feel like you should probably go to work on a day of a motherfucker. Wanted to fight for you to go. <laughs> but it is what it is. But I do. It's also Robert E. Lee Day. Mm. Fuck that. Ah, yeah. Damn it. That's a whole damn, <laughs> a whole damn discussion right there. I would have expected the white person. Uh, <laughs> they had to cover it up. Uh, right. Right. This they changed they, yeah, they, they just playing. changed it back. They, they just changed it back. You don't need a day, nigga. Yeah. But, uh, it's like I feel different weird about celebrating it when it's Robert E. Lee Day. I didn't even know <laughs> it went down. I did know it went down like that. I just been ignorant to you. But guess who, man? I'm, I'm glad you came through. Right. We had a deep-ass conversation, yeah, bro. I feel a, a whole lot better getting a lot of shit off my chest. Yeah, man. All pimped up and bottled up and shit. You trying to hold that in all week, man? Yeah, I got it off my chest. It's... It's tough, but that's what we do, man. We have these tough conversations on Disorderly Conduct. We don't run from them. Um, that's what this is about. It's about being real. It's about being raw. It's about keeping it 100. Make sure you like the Facebook page, Disorderly Conduct Entertainment. Make sure you check out the website at www.disorderlyconductent.com so you can catch those other episodes if you missed the latest. Uh, make sure you subscribe to the podcast on Google iTunes and SoundCloud. Yeah. Listen, like we always say, if you ain't looking, you ain't trying. We building. We out. Hey, man. Uh, I would just like to say thank you, bro. Like, oh, uh, get, it, get, it, get it in, bro. Every, every first, from the from the first time I found Disorderly Conduct, man, you guys actually helped me with some of the concepts y'all talk about. So, man, I'm glad to be on here. Thank hey. you. Hey, that was real. We'll always take that. Keep doing what y'all do, man. Hey. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, <laughs> brother. Crazy. And we out. <laughs>